In the last episode, I spoke to Dr. Shinjo Wu, Xpeng's vice president and head of Autonomous Driving Center. We talked about Xpeng's latest autonomous driving system, XNGP. Now, the first phase of XNGP went live on 31st of March, 2023. The car you see behind me is the P7i. This is an updated version of the P7 and includes all the latest sensors. This car is capable of XNGP. The P7 and I go back quite a long way and previously I've experienced it with highway NGP and its self-parking function. So I'm very much excited to see what XNGP can actually do in this car. I'm Mark Andrews, this is Inside Xpeng. Let's get in the car and see what the autonomous driving function can actually do on the road. I've just activated LCC. LCC is Lane Centered Cruise Control. And this works where City NGP basically is unable to due to the lack of high precision mapping. It keeps within its lane and can go through a traffic light but cannot make a turn. Got a red light coming up. I'm going to see whether it actually slows down. Yep, there we go. So it actually says it's um, stopping for the red light in Chinese there. I do not have my foot on the pedal at all. And we come to complete standstill. And we've got three seconds, two, one, green. Let, oh, and there we go. Yep, here we go. Really no delay there whatsoever. Okay, I'm going to have to take over because we need to actually turn right in 280 meters, which I think is the next intersection. Okay, I think I just heard that City NGP is available now, so I'm going to select it. I need to press it down twice. NGP Right, we're now in City NGP. So with the system, it has City NGP for currently Guangzhou, Shenzhen and Shanghai. City NGP is reliant on high definition mapping. And in the first phase of XNGP, there is the City NGP in those three cities. And then outside those, there's this LCC, which we just experienced. So that will be pretty much everywhere. That's phase one. In phase two, it basically gives City NGP capability everywhere in China, but it's no longer reliant on the high definition mapping. And then next year, 2024, we should have basically complete ADAS, which will mean door-to-door, -door essentially self-driving capability with minimal intervention. I don't know if you can see, but we've got the map here and we've got a really a lot of detail on this. We've got ramps going off, the ramps coming on, and it's not just the route we're going. We can actually see the lanes on the other side of the road as well. But here we've got um, the cars that are surrounding us. We've got buildings. And this is really due to Xnet. And this is creating a surround picture thanks to all the sensors on the car. And it's in 3D. You'll notice that we're actually passing under bridges and these are being shown as well. So that's, I think, a subway line that we just passed under. I should point out that, yes, I've got one hand on the steering wheel. I do not have my feet on the pedals at all, although I do admit I have my foot hovering over the brake just in case. So I'm making no real inputs to this. Oh, we've got a bit of slowing down coming up ahead. What I feel certainly at the moment is that definitely this car has actually selected the correct lane, uh, actually doing a very smooth job. It really is quite smooth. Traffic up ahead is actually quite jammed. Okay, it's sensing this well within time. So no sort of last minute braking. That's nice. I think this is now gonna become a three lane road rather than a two lane road. Okay, it just said something about preparations. So I think it's gonna make a start for turning us over. At least I hope it is. <laughs> Looks, oh yeah, here we go, wow. There. Well, hey, we're in action. Nice. 
Okay, and it's also um, just mentioning that we're going to make preparations again. And I think we're going to do it. Are we going to do it? Ooh, here we go. Yes. So now we're in the lane to go off. And we're now getting into inner city traffic. You can tell by the number of cars. Come on. What are you doing? Hey, where, where, where are we going? There. Okay. okay, sorry. I actually intervened when I don't think I needed to then. Okay. Thought I had. Okay. Oh, we're now going to go on the spiral up to which is this, the Nampu. It's a bit like a kind of corkscrew. It goes up and up and up and up. So we're in the outside lane right now, and in 1.9 kilometers, we need to turn right off the road here. And it's already made an announcement. Oh, it shouldn't have done that. Naughty, naughty. It crossed a solid white line. Sometimes a little bit hesitant with starting off and it's, you can sort of sense it's trying to sort of build up what's around it. And certainly it's a little bit slower off the mark than I would be sometimes, I think. I'm wondering how it even knows there's a green light up ahead. The green light is at least about 100 meters away and it's doing, sensing that it's a green light. Well, that was really quite impressive. One thing x -Bung didn't tell me, and it's a bit of a problem actually, nothing to do really with the system per se, but it's my feeling with the system in my arms. You really have to do so little, your arms actually become painful. I kept having to swap hands. Really, I didn't need to use my right foot much, so I didn't really need to use the brake or the accelerator. Most of the route, there was like, few very short sections where it wasn't either covered by city ngp or lcc so i would say perhaps one or two percent of the route wasn't actually covered all the rest of the route the car was driving itself and really i made very very few interventions and i would say that perhaps with some of those interventions it was more me being too cautious than actually a problem with how the system was working the system was really very, very smooth. Perhaps there were a few sections where I might have made a different choice to how the system chose to do it. And also the car did actually make one mistake at least where it actually crossed over a white line on the highway, which it shouldn't have done that. But generally it did very well. In fact, one of the biggest issues I would say with such systems and going forward is how they interact with other road users because the other road users can be so unpredictable and that's what actually caused us the most problem was the unpredictability of the other road users rather than the dependability of the system. I'm Mark Andrews, that's Inside Xpeng, stay charged. <laughs>